When a teacher thinks deeply about how to communicate an idea to students, the teacher must carefully arrange background information, carefully eliminate unnecessary details, enforce, it's hoped in a logical and deductive way, the acceptance of the idea. Well, I submit this is not a bad description of some of the activities of a researcher. Conversely, uh, when a researcher seeks to uncover new knowledge, the researcher must forsake the familiar and comfortable, struggle with the unknown, and ultimately experience the thrill of discovery and creativity. Is this not what you want all students to encounter in your classes? All that you do in the study, the laboratory of the field, has a potential in your classroom, even if indirectly. At this time, I want to try to connect all these remarks. I am a mathematician. When a mathematician solves a problem, they then try to generalize and apply the solution to as many other situations as possible. This usually consists of removing every unwarranted consideration from the solution except the very essence of what makes it work. We do this to enlarge to the greatest possible degree the application of the idea. The price paid is that the idea then becomes very abstract and it is paradoxical to some, but it's the abstract nature of mathematics that exactly makes it so widely useful. Here, I'm not sure I've solved a problem, but I have talked about the things an aging teacher should know. What can I generalize? Well, I believe a teacher can teach better by considering the student's position. I believe an administrator can administer better by considering the position of faculty and students. I believe researchers and teachers can teach better and discover better by considering each other's approach. I believe students can create better classrooms by considering their classmates. I believe my mother could enjoy better behaved children by considering the opportunities she knew would later follow for us. A mathematician would condense this and say, if X has to relate to Y, then X should consider Y's position. This is a fairly simple idea, and I think we all know it. Yet, if you are a student, you know teachers who sometimes overlook it. If you're a faculty member, you know administrators who sometimes overlook it. And so on to the other st situations I've mentioned. I've tried to use examples that this audience would identify, students, faculty, administrators, but I hope there are applications beyond the university. Personal results and rewards are often best achieved by looking to the needs of others. This is the one thing I would extract from my remarks that might be worthy of generalization. And I thank my mother for teaching it to me. I will also thank each of you, my students who have taught me so much, my colleagues in the Department of Mathematics and across campus, who have tolerated so much, Texas A&M University Commerce for, for providing me a position, and the Texas A&M Board of Regents for the honor of being a Regents Professor. As Ted Hansen said, I will try to be a good Regents Professor. However, I remain just some guy with a degree who does not li want to live around a bunch of idiots. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Anderson, on behalf of the Faculty Senate, I extend our warmest congratulations on your selection as a Regents Professor, and thank you for your more than 36 years of service to Texas A&M Commerce. Your commitment to imagination, 
innovation, and integrity is a shining example of the values this institution holds dear and which all of us should strive to uphold. Long may you continue to excel, and again, congratulations. As we near the end of this uh, wonderful event, I would like to recognize some of those who have played an important role in the success of our proceedings here today. Dr. John Bellotti, lecturer, senior lecturer in mass media, communication, and theater, who lined up the faculty for the processional and who will lead the recessional. Ms. Paige Bussell, registrar, and Ms. Marlena Cameron, graduation coordinator, who assisted Dr. Bellotti. Mr. Rob McWhorter, technical services advisor, who set up the stage and who coordinated the processional and recessional music. And last, but certainly not least, the Golden Leos who handed out programs and served as ushers. Please express your appreciation to all of these individuals. <laughs> now I would like to invite Dr. Hooper and the chorale to lead us in the alma mater, the words of which are printed on the back of your program. At the conclusion of the alma mater, we ask that you remain standing until the recessional has exited the auditorium. Dr. Hooper. Let our voices loudly ringing echo far and near. Songs of praise thy children singing to thy misery Two. Mm -hmm. 